all this rotational stuff. Captain Butler, I just can't take any more rotational calculations. As God is my witness, I can't do it anymore. I think what we need to do is hearken back to the days of F equals MA. Remember F equals MA, that's how we introduced the mass. Everything was one dimension. When you apply a force to something, you change its state of motion. What is it that resists that change? It's the mass, the inertial mass. So let's see if there's something similar here. So here's our disk that's allowed free to rotate. And I can apply a torque, and it begins to move. But I feel something there. It resists the motion. Well, it has mass. But there's more to it than that for rotational motion. It has what we call rotational inertia. Rotational inertia, to give you a casual definition, it's like mass. It's like the mass for rotational motion. It is what uh, is the property of an object that resists rotational motion. And obviously, that's why the word inertia is in it. And it does depend on the mass of the object, but it depends on other things as well. Just so you don't get confused, this is the same thing as the moment of inertia. It's commonly referred to as the moment of inertia. It shows up <coughs> in what is essentially Newton's second law for rotation, that the sum of all the torques on an object equals this thing that resists uh, motion. We label it I times the angular acceleration of the object. So I is the rota rotational inertia. It's the moment of inertia. Um, and the unit, it's in kilogram meter squared. So just from the unit, you can see it depends on its mass, and it depends on something about its geometry or its size or where the mass is. Um, let me illustrate how, uh, how it depends on these, these properties just with a few examples. So let's look at a mass in a circle, basically our uniform circular motion we dealt with before. If we're at some radius and we have some mass m, i equals m r squared. Okay? That's not for the disk. That's for the individual mass moving around a circle. What about a solid cylinder? All right, so if we have a cylinder here, and it's got some radius r, and it's got some mass m, what would be its moment of inertia? Actually, I can't tell you. I don't know. Because moment of inertia, like torque, depends on the axis of rotation. Here, I pretty much gave you the axis of rotation when I said it's a mass moving in a circle, and I drew a circle. Here, I haven't given it to you yet. You could have a moment of inertia about this axis, and this is the one I'm going to give you, and that I is equal to, I believe it's 1 half, yes, 1 half m r squared. So 1 half the total mass of the cylinder times the radius squared. But there are other axes you could consider. You could have the axis going like this and have it rotate around a vertical axis in the plane of the board. That would be a completely different formula. So moment of inertia is not a property of an object. It's a property of an object about a specific axis. A single object can have many different moments of inertia because a single object can rotate about many different axes. You'll notice the length isn't in here, and because really the length doesn't matter. If you think about spinning this thing around this axis, kind of like this, it doesn't matter how long it is. The mass is distributed. The dis distribution of mass relative to the axis just depends on how far it is out in radius. It doesn't matter how far it is that way. So maybe that gives you a little bit of an intuition, begin to get an intuition. Um, let's look at a stick. Uh, Lord, I'll say stick at the center. Sometimes I write something and I just can't recover. There we go. A stick right here, middle of the stick. And the stick's length is L. Right, a stick of length L, like we thought about for the torque. Moment of inertia. Can't get it. Because I haven't specified the axis yet. OK, so the axis we're rotating about is here. So about the center of the stick, going around like that. In that case, it's 1 12th. I equals 1 12th m l squared. Okay. 
how about a sphere? We have a sphere, kind of like that. We give it a radius r, give it a total mass m. It's i, I believe it's 4 fifths m r squared. Okay. 4 fifths, yes. Oh, no, 2 fifths, sorry. 2 fifths. I don't have them all memorized. 2 fifths m r squared. So these formulas, you may wonder where they come from. You can calculate them. There's some integrals and calculus involved. We aren't going to do it. Usually um, at sort of the AP Physics 1 level exam, they'll give you the I, the moment of inertia, if you need it. And this is the simplest one to memorize here. It's just a mass at a certain radius. But usually it's just a geometrical formula that you'll be given. But what I hope you can start to see from this is the moment of inertia depends on the amount of mass and how it is distributed. And we're going to see that illustrated several times as we think about torques and angular accelerations, and in the future we think about uh, angular momentum and conservation of angular momentum.